Welcome folks. Today I was going to be showing you how to uh, check your engine's uh, oil. Um, what you see before you here is a, um, a dipstick. This one's out of a, a Dodge V8, 360 cubic inch. And I've uh, made up a little uh, template or display, if you will, out of some recycled cardboard. Um, this is what, is what it depicts or represents is, is the oil pan. It's, it usually sits at the bottom of your engine. Uh, just about every engine that I know of, anyways, uh, has a, an oil pan at the bottom. And the Earth's gravity will make all that liquid oil, hot or cold, go to the bottom of the oil pan after it all drains down from the engine. Um, before I forget, I'll, 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 I'll tell you now. Um, if you're going to check your engine oil, you always have to wait, especially after you've, you've driven it for a while, because with most engines, the oil pump circulates the oil through the whole engine. So uh, if you check it too quick, a lot of that oil will be in suspension up on top of the valve train and uh, various uh, oil passage and, and stuff. So you have to wait till the oil actually drains back into the pan. So give it, if you can, say if you're doing some highway driving, for instance, and you're going to fill up, you're going for a couple hundred, couple thousand mile holiday, and uh, you're stopping in for gas. Uh, don't be in any hurry to check your oil because, like I say, that oil is suspended in the top end of your engine. It'll give you a false indication of how much oil is really in there. So get your gas and do whatever you have to do first. Get your snacks, use the washroom facilities, then come back and check your oil. Give it a chance to drain back into the oil pan so that you can actually see the level on your dipstick as to how much oil is actually in the engine. It sits in that oil pan. Okay, I've started the video off this way because I had to square everything up and show you um, the relationship of everything here. And I'm going to show you the top end of the dipstick where the, the pull loop is for your finger to pull it out of the engine. Okay, so what I've got here, you can notice I've got oil level here. These, uh, these section lines at 45 degrees represent what oil is sitting in the pan. Um, there's the bottom of the oil pan where I've drew, um, drawn this uh, felt pen line. And normally dipstick doesn't go all the way down in there, it stops, and I'll show you the other end of the dipstick where it stops in a, in a metal tube that you slide the dipstick in in order to feed it down into the, the oil pan. Okay, so uh, you'll see on here, I'll be turning this at 90 degrees, but just while we got it sitting here, you'll see add and full marks with arrows pointing to two lines on here. Now the way I've got it set up right now is uh, what I have to do is simulate things. Okay, what I like to do, well I'll mention it too, is I check my oil first thing in the morning before I go anywhere. That gives the oil a chance overnight to drain back into the oil pan. That way I know what's really in the engine. And you also have to remember too that your oil filter holds anywhere, oh, average uh, a quart of oil your, will be in your oil filter or a liter if you're, you're using the metric system. Generally speaking, a smaller car might be a bit less, maybe half of that amount. So um, everything taken into consideration, uh, ideally, the way I do it is in the morning first thing before I drive the vehicle and make sure it's at the full mark. You can operate the vehicle anywhere between these add and full marks but I prefer to keep it at the full mark once that all that uh, oil is drained back into the oil pan. Now um, I'll be using a, an actual oil and showing you this in a few minutes here but I just want to get this out of the way. Um, if you find like say you've, you've gone for that long trip, you knew you left home and, and the thing checked out, you had it full of oil then you go on this long highway trip and you have an older car, say, well they generally tend to use, burn up a little bit more oil. Uh, you could have leaky um, valve guide seals, uh, valve stems, and it's leaking down to the engine actually burning it. Or you could have um, different scenarios, uh, blow by, say your piston rings are worn and and you, you can get a lot of that going through the PCV system. So your, your engine, if it uses more oil, you have to look at it that that much more often. I would say um, you know at least once a week if you're just driving it around the city every few miles but if at every gas stop every, every time you get gas is a good time to check it. Even if you don't check it at the gas station you do it in your own driveway at home. Um, generally uh, yeah probably every gas tank or if you're not driving that much once a week would be good I guess. The more the merrier you might say and probably better for the engine to make sure you stay on top of things. Say if, uh, for instance, um, you developed a leak in your oil pan or someone didn't put the oil filter on properly and you're leaking oil and you're driving along, unless you've got a, an oil warning light on your dashboard to tell you you're losing oil, well, you do major engine damage and 
and you might even have to put another engine in there if it gets serious enough so always make sure your oil is maintained at the proper level like I say you can you can uh, use the vehicle as long as it's between the ad and full mark but like I say I like to keep it at the full mark once that oil is all drained down into the oil pan overnight okay so that's what you're basically looking at now I can do it here as well as with the the real oil I'll just move this there's a stop actually on the top of the dipstick and, it, and you can only push it down so far so but I'm gonna simulate that so say um, you're dangerously low say you were down here after you let that oil drain overnight in the morning say you came and you um, checked your oil and you found the oil well below the ad mark well you might have some warning signs with your engine uh, if you have hydraulic lifters uh, to actuate the valve mechanism then they might start to click or clatter that'll be an indication that uh, the oil is uh, a little bit on the low side or conversely I'll explain the full side overfilled side rather as well but this is at a dangerous level you want to always keep it after that oil has been drained back into the pan for you know at least 15 minutes between those ad and full marks and I'll keep repeating that until uh, both you and I really get that embedded in our uh, our mind uh, so we can uh, care for our cars okay so if you see it there it's danger you gotta you gotta shut that thing off and you know take your key with you uh, engines gonna be hot if you're checking it hot watch out for hot parts you don't want to burn yourself okay uh, engine oil also uh, a lot of the containers I've read says uh, don't get used oil on your skin meaning your fingers or your hands when you're checking it also don't forget that oil is going to be hot when you're using a rag or a, a napkin or whatever to, to clean it off to, to reinsert the, the dipstick to get the reading um, so watch out it's cancer causing so they say on the warning labels on uh, most oil containers that you you buy these days uh, so wash your hands right away if you get any oil on you at all uh, I'm not sure if the brand new oil is as hazardous as the old stuff but at any rate get that off your hands uh, the second that you get it on there uh, maybe take some uh, wet wipes or something with you before you uh, attempt to uh, check your oil so also make sure your vehicle is on uh, level ground if you're on a steep hill it's it's no use because um, just just like uh, you know you got water in a bucket you tilt that bucket well you know depending on where your dipstick is in your oil pan if it's dead center in the middle then you probably be okay but most dipsticks aren't they're usually to one side or one end of that pan somewhere so you want to get a true reading make sure your car is on the level um, if you don't have a level driveway at home go find a parking lot somewhere away from everybody else and you can check it there or at least get a reference point now if you have a slightly inclined driveway you can get your your reference point and know exactly where it is and then come home wait a while and check it in your driveway and you notice a, a bit, bit of a different reading there but at least you'll know uh, in your driveway if it's not sloped too steep uh, you can uh, calibrate it that way but otherwise the level ground is the best place to check your oil today at any rate okay so now if you have that you got to make sure you get your oil back in there wait there at least 10-15 minutes before you check it let that oil get a chance to drain back into the pan conversely um, actually it can cause foaming your um, back to this lower too low a level like I say you might hear some uh, hydraulic lifter going click click or clatter clatter um, that's lack of oil around the uh, the pickup um, screen or yeah uh, the pickup screen where it picks up the oil the oil pump might be drawing in air with that oil if it gets too low generally it doesn't but it can go the other way too if you have too much oil in your crankcase say you're way up here you checked it too soon and you put say uh, well, just let me reach in here a second yeah, so we're gonna pull this down a bit more there so say you're overfilled okay uh, same problem happens here uh, you get your your crankshaft uh, counterweights usually or your the big end of your connecting rods dipping down into the oil because this is too too high in the oil pan you have too much oil in it so that's the reason they don't want you to overfill it you think that more is better because you won't run short of oil but if you get a the crankshaft counterweights um, and or the um, the big end of the uh, connecting rods dipping into that oil it will cause foam get a lot of bubbles in your oil and your oil pump will pick that up through the pickup screen and, and you'll have uh, aerated oil or in other words uh, oil with bubbles being pumped through your engines uh, oiling system and that'll usually cause your very first sign that you'll hear is if you have hydraulic lifters is you'll hear a, a click click or a clatter clatter out of the valve train mechanisms okay so enough of this um, for now with the um, the mock-up if you will 
Um, what I'll do now is I'll move over to the actual real oil. Um, just before I do that though, I'm going to um, show you the other end of this dipstick here. There's, uh, like I say, there's the actual, uh, I'll set it down so it stays still. Um, it's, uh, it's just a little loop, most of them, some of them, I could say probably most of them, they have a loop on there to put your finger in there so you can, uh, you can withdraw it from the engine, okay? And also I'll simulate it here, I got a piece of soda straw. They usually go down into, some of them might even go into the engine block if you have an import, but uh, most of the, the older domestic V8s had a metal tube and this, this soda straw is going to simulate that. And right here you can see there's a stop, there's a bit of a shoulder there, right where my thumbnail is. Okay, so you can only slide it in that metal pipe and it goes down into the engine like so and it stops there. Okay, so when you take your, your reading, you basically want to um, pull it out of there. Okay, I'm going to do this dry so I don't have to get oil all over the place, but I'll still be doing that, I guess. Uh, okay, so what you'd want to do, I'm probably going to be on a bit of an angle. You're going to be in this, this orientation here when you pull it out of the engine. It's going to be vertical or slightly to one side, but for the video, I'm going to go sideways a little bit on you. You actually have to read the oil when it's horizontal too, otherwise the oil will, if you have it vertical, when you try to read the oil level on there, it'll... It'll probably be, with Earth's gravity, it'll probably draw it down and give you a false reading. So what you want to do after you withdraw it from the engine is you want to turn it so it's horizontal so that the oil will lay flat on the dipstick when, while you read it. If you um, have it this way, or this way the oil will run and it'll give you a false reading. Okay, so like the very first time you've extracted it, you're on level ground, you've pulled it out of the um, either the engine block, if that's the case, or the metal tube I just described. Um, you pull it out of there, okay, and the first thing you want to do is you want to wipe it, okay, especially if you've been using the vehicle, a road trip or what have you, or you need to check it after you've filled up your gas tank, paper towel or a, a rag or whatever you got handy, Kleenex, just make sure you got enough of it so you don't get any of this on your hands, and if you do, like I say, like I mentioned, uh, go wash your hands right away once you're finished doing this. So what you want to do is just fold it over and slide the dipstick through it like so, and that'll pick up any of the oil onto the rag or the paper towel that you have. Okay, then what you have to do then, you know it's clean at this point, there's no false reading going to be there. Um, you just get it, and you put it back in the engine, right? Put it back in the engine until it hits its stop. Okay, and then it's basically count to three. Three seconds to give the chance for the oil to stick to the dipstick. Don't, don't rush it. Just count one, two, three, and you're ready. And you withdraw it again from the engine. And then you turn the, um, the dipstick horizontal, okay? And um, I actually got another piece of cardboard I can slip under here to help highlight it a bit. There we go. Straighten things out a little bit. So what you're going to have now is um, you're going you're gonna to see oil. Uh, it'll be clinging to the dipstick, rather. and um, It'll give you a reading as to where it is. Remember, give the, the oil a chance to drain back into the oil pan. Don't be in any hurry to do it. Give it 10 or 15 minutes if you can. Overnight's better. Um, and uh, if you have a, an older a high mileage engine or whatever, and it's burning oil, you're going to find that it's going to vary quite a bit. The more miles you put on it, uh, the faster it's going to be burning that oil. So you got to always make sure, pay attention to your, your engine. Give it the care it needs. And you'll see on there somewhere where the oil level is, okay? Now that's just in, in general terms and showing you with the mock-up and my way to describe it. This is the way I, I normally do it. It's just um, the way I check my oil is the way I do it. But this mock-up is provided for you for the video so you can understand it a little bit uh, easier, make it more simple in that respect. Okay, now I'm going to take this out of, the, out of the frame for a second. And we're going to get some, some real oil happening here. I've got a little jar full of... Uh, it's not, it's not standard uh, oil from, uh, for engines. This is actually differential oil for your rear axle. It's uh, 80W90. Uh, 80 goes as low as an 80 uh, in winter and it acts like a 90 weight of heavier oil. The reason I'm using this heavy oil for this uh, demonstration for oil, um, engine oil reading is because it'll stick to the dipstick better. It won't run off on me as fast. But in general terms, a new engine oil will be kind of an amber color. Uh, it might not be quite as dark as this gear oil. But um, now, now I'll show you um, what we got going on here. 
Okay, hopefully the video will show it up. So I'm just going to dip this um, probably from the side. Normally you'd, you'd come in, like I say, to the oil pan from the vertical, like you see on your video. But I'm going to do it from the side just because uh, it's easier. Don't have to lean into the what the video camera is seeing. So I'll give you a couple of scenarios here. I'll give you the, the perfect one. This is when I check my engine oil first thing in the morning before the car has been driven. I came home last night after being out doing some shopping. So a car gets parked in the, the driveway. I come out first thing in the morning, get up a little earlier so that wherever, wherever I'm heading it's not going to interfere with my schedule. So we're going to put this down. Remember it's going to hit the stop when you push it down into the tube or the engine block as the case may be. But I'll give you the first scenario and hopefully I can get this right. Count your three seconds and then withdraw it. And then after that, you want to turn it horizontal, just like you see in your video. Okay. So, I'll show you what I've got here. I've got a... I'm going to steady my hand up a bit with some hockey pucks. Okay. So that's why you'll see a little bit of... Maybe you won't see it in the camera. But right now, it's just a very small... If you can see the shine on it, that is, from the, uh, the video camera, you might, you might not. But I'll point this bamboo skewer right where the oil is reading, where I can see it here. It's just a, just a very slight amount below the full mark. Now that's that's plenty good enough. That's been sitting overnight. And it'll be easier to see if you have a dirty oil on there. But remember, the dirtier the oil, the more contaminants in it and the more unhealthy it is for you. Uh, make sure you wash your hands with soap and water. And make sure that you don't leave that sitting around. It's not, uh, not good. Okay, so that's an, an, a good scenario where I don't have to do anything. I can just go ahead and, you know, like I say, the first time uh, in the morning, generally it will st stay right where it should be. But just for added insurance, withdraw the dipstick. Actually, back up one step here. I've got some... Um, we're going to go... Go wet. Okay, so... We do that. So we just with, withdrew the, the dipstick from the engine, okay? So we don't not sure if that's the real reading. So what we'll do is we'll we'll clean off the oil that's in there, and then we'll reinsert it into the engine and count our three seconds, right? And then uh, we can we can take that reading. Now I'll go in again. That was that first part was when it was under ideal conditions. Okay, now we'll go down the other. We'll go reinsert that stick, and I'll give you another scenario here. All right. So now we got. Um, we're sitting right at the add mark line. Okay, we're right here where the bamboo skewer is right there. Okay, so generally with North American cars um, in the past and even some of, some of the V6, the General Motors V6, pretty much the same. Uh, the difference between an add and full mark could be as much as a, a quart or uh, an American quart is generally give or take a Canadian liter amount. Uh, different vehicles will require different amounts. Uh, smaller um, engines might be a lesser amount to top it up, but check with your owner's manual. Uh, look around on the net and find out what, what the actual difference is. Uh, just make sure you put your uh, dipstick horizontal, because if, like I say, if you have it up and down or vertical, that oil will run on you and you won't get a, a true reading. So we're sitting right here at the ad mark, okay? So I know I don't want to run my engine uh, unless it's an emergency situation, but I want to I wanna get somewhere safe and I, I want to um, top that thing up. Another thing I'll mention too is whenever I, I take a vehicle anywhere, especially for a, a longer uh, drive somewhere, is I like to keep the same kind of oil in, in my vehicle year-round, okay? Uh, you might not be able to depending on your climate. You might have to change the, the weight of the oil to accommodate how cold or how hot it is in your, your region where you're driving your car. But always keep the same brand of oil. Uh, I would recommend the same brand of oil, no matter what it is, a quality brand name uh, oil. And keep keep a you know a liter or a quart or a couple of them in your your trunk and secured so they don't you know rattle around in there and cause an oil flood in your trunk or or wherever you're keeping it. Um, always keep the same oil as well. I wouldn't uh, recommend mixing different brands. Uh, they have different additives. They could interact with one another. Uh, much like pharmaceuticals, uh, you got to really watch when you're taking prescriptions too. But the same thing applies to motor oil. I would highly recommend that you pick an oil, a, a good brand name oil, and uh, stick with it. Okay, And you might have to change uh, the weight of the oil depending on what your climate is, like I say. But for me, I can tell you what I run. 
I run a brand name oil. Uh, I've used three different brand, uh, major brands of oils over the years. Um, but I like to use, uh, where I live, uh, very seldom goes over 100 degrees Fahrenheit on a hot summer day. And in winter, it, it, it does dip below freezing just by a few degrees. So it's uh, it works good for me. I use 10W40. 10W stands for the winter uh, weight. It'll start start easy enough because uh, we never get that cold see so if you're going uh, 40 below and you're uh, you're gonna have to go to a 5 weight something 530 5w30 or something but uh, I like the old school stuff myself I like to use the thickest oil that I can and still be able to start it in the winter when it's cold because the oil thickens up okay when the engines not running okay so now we're at the ad mark uh, I know uh, you have to put in here about a liter or a US quart of oil to top that up but just add a little bit at a time and, and reinsert this, the dipstick and take an, another reading until you get it to where it's at the full mark again but don't go over full once that oil is uh, drained back into your oil pan never go over the full mark like I had mentioned uh, the oil will start to foam and uh, your your oil pickup for your oil pump will start, start drawing in um, air bubbles and that's not a healthy thing for your engine so you want to keep it right in this range here but never over full and I'd never want to go below the ad mark that's for sure especially when you're traveling down the highway you know uh, and those those engine revs are coming up pretty high okay so uh, this by the way I use conventional oil uh, there's other guys that swear by the, um, the synthetics or the semi synthetics that are out there they're three or four times the price of this conventional oil I, I get like five liters or it's, it's basically about the same size as five US quarts for about twenty five dollars and that's a brand name and I get it in a five liter jug, uh, easy to, to get. And that's all I've ever run. I've never gone to the synthetic at all. Um, if I was racing and I wanted to shave a few uh, seconds or hundreds of a second off my quarter mile times or whatever, yeah, I'd probably go synthetic, all right. But I've always stuck to the conventional oils. But like I say, a brand name, that's the way to go. Okay, no matter what it is, don't, don't buy those, uh, you know, recycled El Cheapo uh, oils, uh, you're, unless you really don't care much about your engine and you think you're saving a lot of money that way, but if you've got an engine you care about use, use a good uh, brand name of oil in it. Okay, so uh, there's that scenario with adding that and then we can uh, probably go, uh, ha I could even give you the halfway, we'll, we'll re-dip that, we wipe it off, you re-dip it Okay. Remember, this is gear oil. It's sticking. It's sticking really good. Uh, the normal, especially when you're uh, engine oil, it's thinner to begin with when it's at room temperature. But uh, when your engine warms it up, it, it tends to thin out um, quite a bit. That's why I like to use a, a heavier oil because I know when it, that engine heats it up and that oil's at operating temperature, fully warmed up, it's it's going to thin out. Uh, the synthetics, they they have the synthetic oils rather. They have a Generally, they do start with a lighter weight, a lot of them, and they can retain their uh, oiling ability. They don't uh, oxidize or break down like the conventional oils, apparently. But here's this scenario here now. Um, we've got it, so it's exactly halfway between the oil, uh, oil, the add and the full mark. Okay, so what are we going to do here? You could run the engine like that, but still, remember, um, I pack a, a liter or two, or a US cord if you want to call it that, in my trunk. And uh, if I see that, after I know the oil has been drained uh, back into the oil pan overnight, um, I know exactly that's going to be about half a liter, half a U.S. quart. So I'll add a little bit at a time till I bring it back to full. Like I say, the most important part is to make sure the oil gets a chance to drain back in your oil pan, because if you do it in a hurry, like I say, you're going to have too much oil in your oil pan, and you're going to have aeration. Like I say, it's the, the crankshaft counterweights and the big end of the conrods, and they'll be dipping in your oil and uh, they'll be foaming it up for you. You don't want that. So there's the my parting message here. Always keep your oil uh, between the ad and full, preferably at the um, the full mark. Full is good. You know you've got extra oil, uh, extra capacity in your oil pan, um, especially at high speeds. You don't want to ever go too low on your oil. Um, like I say, uh, either way it's bad. Too little or too much is not good. Okay, so try to keep it at the full mark, no more, and um, that, that way you know you've got, uh, you're caring for your engine and you've got the lubrication for that oil pump to, 
to force through your engine and, and keep everything nicely lubricated. So there you go folks, there's my take on uh, how to check your oil and to watch out for things for your, your engine there. That engine's the one that takes you and your family all over the place for your shopping, your holidays and everything. Treat it with some kindness. Okay, so there you go. Take care, have a nice day and uh, bye for now.